May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We welcome everyone to worship, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, those of you who are worshiping through our live stream. We are glad to be able to worship together. If you're new to us, we hope that you'll introduce yourselves. We would love to get to know you better. Today is a baptism Sunday as well as communion Sunday. Those of you who are worshiping at home, if you'd like to participate in the sacrament right at this 10:15 hour, you need to have a little bread, some juice or wine, a cracker, whatever it is you can use for your elements close at hand so that you can participate in the sacrament as well. I think everybody knows, but we're going to say it out loud. Today is Don Dolan's last day with us. I know, I know, that seems so strange to say. We didn't get to vote, so, you know, I guess you're fortunate on that. But the flowers this morning are in honor of Don's 22 years of ministry with us, and um, we are going to have a special celebration time right after he finishes the postlude. We'll make sure he makes his way directly around the corner, and uh, we will thank him and have some fun, and you'll have an opportunity to wish him well as he begins his new ministry at Nassau this week. Church school begins next week, 9 o'clock. There are classes for children and youth and adults. The children's classes will go straight to the Dove Room for music with Mr. Phil and then break into their classrooms. Youth go straight up to the balcony classroom, and the adult Bible and theology class is in the upper room. If you don't know where any of these things are, show up. We'll help you find your right spot. The adults are going to be starting a six-week class on the prophets from the Old Testament, a part of the Bible that you may not be as familiar with, but has a lot to do with how we live our faith in the world. Next Sunday, we will also have a blessing of the backpacks during our time with children in worship. So young ones, bring your backpacks with you to church. Older ones, if you have a backpack, a gym bag, a computer bag, any kind of bag that you would like to have a blessing, bring it along next week and you can be included in the blessing of the backpacks. Brown bag lunch programs are starting up after two year hiatus because of COVID back together this Friday the 9th, bring a sack lunch. You can share fellowship at 1230 and then the um, program is from one until two. In this time, it's about Operation Blue Angel related to our police department and seniors. From our local um, ministry service team, we have an opportunity to help out arm in arm in a yes we can food drive. It's gonna be this Saturday the 10th. You can sign up to help from nine to 11 or from 11 to one. You can sign up to help. You can donate canned goods. You can take a bag with you. We have lots out there that have, has a list of the kinds of foods that we need, both canned and other kinds as well. But we really wanna have some Pennington Presbyterians there to cheer on folks as they're coming um, to the farmer's market that they might also join in helping to feed our hungry neighbors. So speak with uh, Lee White after worship today. Everyone's invited to a special gathering hosted by our prison pen pal team. They're going to share their ministry and fill us in on things that are really important for us to know about women and incarceration here in New Jersey. That's on Thursday, September 15th at 5 p.m. And finally, save the date, Saturday, October 1st, we're having our second annual fall block party. The whole community is invited. There are lots of ways that you can be involved, lots of volunteer opportunities. Cindy Reeder is taking the lead on helping to plug in volunteers, and um, we hope that you will be part of that. The money that we raise from that goes to scholarships for students from Urban Promise and Trenton who are now college students, and there's a lot of expenses that even college scholarships don't cover, and we want to make sure that they are able to thrive as they learn. So save October 1st. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now for worship. Please rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us sing praises to God who reigns above, who is the God of all creation. Let us sing praise to God who is the God of power and love and salvation. To God be all praise and glory. be seated. Beloved people of God, our baptism is a sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through baptism, we're made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage to sin. So let us celebrate freedom and redemption through renewal of the promises made at baptism and reaffirm our own commitment to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. So let us once again then reject sin and turn to Christ. Friends, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. 
Let us offer our silent confessions now. Amen. Friends, remember your baptism and hear the sound of grace being poured out for you. It's in Jesus Christ that all of our sins are forgiven. So live as people who are redeemed and live in God's grace. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, be present with us as we listen to the word read and proclaimed. Open us to what you have to teach us today. We ask, amen. For just as the body is one, it says in 1 Corinthians, and it has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Now is our time with the children, so I'd like to invite all the children in the sanctuary, if you'd like to come forward, you can have a seat on the floor. Good morning. And um, for our friends worshiping with us online, you can scooch in a little closer too. Good morning, friends. Wow. Have a seat. 
Good morning, good morning. You can stay right there if you'd like or come have a seat up here too. So friends, this morning I've been thinking about water on this Baptism Sunday. I love water. What are some things that you do with water? Can you think of anything? Jalen? You swim in it. I love to swim. Do you swim in the ocean and the pool? So many different places to swim. And for my birthday, I got a new mermaid bathing suit and it was really cool. For your birthday, you got a new mermaid bathing suit and you got to swim around in your pool. It's very cool. Nolan, what are some things you do with water? You drink it. I'm so thirsty. I love to drink water. Connor, what were you thinking of? That was yours too. Do you take a bath maybe or take a shower? We clean ourselves with water. We hydrate ourselves with water. Is there anything else you can think of that you do with water? You get baptized with water. You get baptized with water, Nolan. Exactly. So many good things we do with water. Caleb, are you thinking of something? You can use water for the water table. We can play with water. We have that one. We have a, we have a water table in the pool. You have a water table in the pool. Uh, yeah, both, but they're not inside. I see. So I love that. It's so versatile. That means we can do so many different things with water. We play with it. It helps take care of us, take care of our bodies. And it's a special part of our sacrament here in church. Um, we baptize people with water, like Nolan said. And we put water on the person being baptized. We put water on their head as a sign of God's love for them and that we belong to God because we are God's family. So today, we'll baptize baby Hazel, and we need to put some more water in the baptismal font. So I'm wondering if you all can help me add some water to the font. I'll give you each a cup if you'd like to add some water. Okay, I'd like to. You'd like to? Thank you. There you go. Would anyone else like to add some water? I don't know. That's okay. You can think about it. I don't even think I'm talking to We'll step up the steps if you'd like. Here you go. Willa, would you like to add some water? You can think about it too. Sure, I'll do it. Okay. Here we go. So here, I'll give you each some water in your cup. And very carefully, you can pour it into the font. Watch behind you, Caleb, sorry. You can watch too and listen for the sound of the tickling water. Ready? Just a little. Hold on tight. Should we add the rest of it in? Yeah. Nolan, would you like to do the honors? Thank you, friends. Let's remain standing here and pray together. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for opportunities to share in our sacraments together. Help us to remember that we all participate in this sacrament as we come together as God's family in our church. Bless each one of us today, and especially we pray that you would bless baby Hazel on this day of her baptism. Amen. Now friends, you can sit back down right here on the floor or on the steps so you can have a front row seat for our special time in worship today. That's perfect. Thank you, Nolan. Okay, we're going to get you guys down on the floor because we're going to have some other people up here. So I'd like to invite Phil and Miriam and Baby Hazel and their sponsors to come forward and Elder Bill Travel representing our session.
hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Obeying the words of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Hazel Sophia McMillan, daughter of Miriam Deephouse McMillan and Philip McMillan, to receive the sacrament of baptism. To the parents, Phil and Miriam, do you desire that Hazel be baptized? We do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? We do. Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love to your life's end? Do you have a scripture verse to share with us today? James chapter three, verses 17 and 18. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. To the sponsors, Ali and Scott, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Hazel to be a faithful Christian? We do. And to the children, I have some questions for you too. Do you promise to be a friend to Hazel? If she needs directions, will you show her the way? If she falls down, will you pick her up? Will you play with her and share with her the stories of Jesus? Thank you, friends. Do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Hazel by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of this church. We do. We would. Let us stand and profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. Let us pray. <clears throat> Send your spirit, O Lord, to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Hazel, that she may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise and honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come here, sweet girl. 
What is the Christian name of your child? Hazel Sophia. Hazel Sophia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hazel Sophia, you belong to Christ. You are sealed with Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Friends, see what love God has for us, that we should be called children of God, for that is what we are. Let us pray. Ever-living God, in your mercy, you promise not only to be our God, but also to be the God of our children. We thank you for receiving Hazel by baptism. Keep her always in your love. Guide her as she grows in faith. Bring her to confess Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and the faith of the church. We pray too for Phil and Miriam. Give them wisdom and patience to guide Hazel and Caleb in the way of Jesus Christ. Help Caleb to be a loving big brother to Hazel. Let love and peace dwell in their home. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome Hazel, our new sibling in Christ. Hey, children, you can go back with your families and I'll walk Hazel around as we sing. Our second scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18, and 23 and 24. Let's listen for a word from God. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you're there. 
if I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, and none of them as yet even existed. How weighty are your thoughts to me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. What do you think an alien might make of baptism? Would an alien see a cute baby and an adoring family? Of course, we do have a cute baby and an adoring family. Would an alien have any clue how radical baptism is? How truly marvelous and mysterious our sacraments are? You know, you can put away the alien thought, do we even understand how marvelous and mysterious these sacraments are? If we're honest, the meaning of baptism may not be all that clear to us either. Some scholars believe that baptism started getting fuzzy in the fourth century. If you're a good student of history, you may recall that it was in the fourth century that Emperor Constantine became a Christian and was himself baptized. By the end of the fourth century, everyone in the entire Roman Empire, except Jews, by law, were Christians. Do you see how it started to get kind of fuzzy? Religion and national identity kind of blurred together. They were fused. As the centuries went on, most countries in Europe had state churches. So depending on what country you were from, you were a Roman Catholic or you were a Protestant. Again, Jews were treated differently. Our own country's founding included an experiment with a new way of thinking of not having a state-sponsored religion, but allowing for all citizens to worship or to not worship as they pleased. But other questions about baptism arose over time. Questions about what difference does this sacrament make? <clears throat> In our country, some wondered what baptism actually meant if people could walk out of the sanctuary doors on a Sunday morning, grab their picnic baskets, and head to view a lynching, cheering on mob rule and racism. Doesn't being baptized make that wrong? Inappropriate? Yes. Yes, it does. In Germany, some Christians began to wonder about baptism and its meaning when they watched baptized people grow up and then participate in the Holocaust in persecuting and killing millions of Jews along with some homosexuals and non-Aryans. Doesn't being a baptized Christian mean you can't act that way? Hate like that? Kill like that? Live like that? Yes. It does. In
in our own day, we struggle with this too. Our own awareness of the ugliness and the ugly sins of our past guides us to be diligent not to fall into those same attitudes and beliefs and behaviors. In fact, we're called to do more than just not fall into those attitudes and behaviors. We don't just avoid the sins of racism and nationalism and homophobia. We work together for positive change. This is precisely why we are a Matthew 25 congregation, working together to do all we can to help eradicate poverty and systemic injustice. Friends, we baptized. What we do at the font matters. It matters a lot. Baptism should never be watered down and reduced to just a sweet event that brings together relatives from far and wide. It's great to have a family gathering, but baptism is not a pretext for a party. And baptism should never morph into a patriotic event where nationalism and Christian faith are one and the very same thing. So what does baptism then actually mean? What is God doing for Hazel? What is God doing in Hazel? What is God doing in and for us? What impact will it have? There is so much that we could talk about, but let me just mention a couple of things. First, we are reminded that God knew Hazel and loved her even before we knew and loved Hazel. God has named and claimed her. She is a child of God by God's grace. Second, we respond to God's grace in baptism as we turn away from evil and we turn toward Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away. We promise to be Christ's disciples, to know him and to love him and to serve him in this world. It's a great blessing. All of us, we've promised to do that today. And we pray that Hazel, as she grows, will do that too. Baptism calls for a fierce loyalty, not to family, not to clan, not to country, not to political party or economic philosophy. Our loyalty is first and only to Jesus Christ, the Lord to whom we belong. Our ethics as Christians always begins right here at the font. The psalmist in Psalm 139 prays to God. The whole thing is a prayer. The psalmist prays, Lord, you've searched me, you know me, you know everything about me, you know every word even before I speak, you know when I get up, when I lie down, no matter where I go, I could never run and be away from you. And at the end, the psalmist is praying about their life before God and asking God to search and to know and to see if there is any wickedness and to be led in the way everlasting. Yes, children of God, baptism matters. How we live matters. God's grace doesn't give us a pass. We must never be, use it to cover up behavior that's unloving or unjust. To be baptized is to be a Christian, and to be Christian is to follow Jesus Christ, and to love and serve and sacrifice and welcome the way Jesus did. And sometimes that means we're going to stick out in the world like a sore thumb. We're never going to be perfect at this. Hazel's not going to be perfect at it either. But God has an ongoing gift of grace for us right here in the Lord's Supper. It's a table of grace that we come to again and again, remembering our baptism, remembering that we are children of God, remembering God's love that is already there for us, remembering what Christ has done. And we are fed and we recommit ourselves to living fully into our baptism every day. Hazel belongs to God. We belong to God. It's marvelous and it's mysterious.
Amen. The Gospel of Matthew reminds us, freely you have received, freely give. Those worshiping with us in the sanctuary are invited to place your gifts in the offering plate as the ushers come by. And for those worshiping with us from home, you may offer a contribution on our website using the Give Now button, or you may mail in a gift or drop one off at the church office. May each of our gifts individually and together help spread the gospel, nurture disciples of Jesus, and make our world more loving and just.
let us pray together the prayer of dedication. We praise you, God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. And with a desire to live as Christians, as instruments of your grace in this world. We pray in the name of Jesus, who gave himself for us. Amen. I'll share with you a few joys and concerns that have come to my attention this week, and then if, if there are any others, you could raise your hand, I'll come to you, and you could share your joy or your concern, and then we'll wrap those together in our communion prayer. Joys, Don and Ellen Wright, share the joy of just having become great grandparents, and so they welcome uh, a granddaughter to Vanessa, or granddaughter Vanessa and her husband Matt, our parents of Aria Wright Tin. And of course, we have great gratitude for Don Dolan for the gifts of music and friendship and prayers for him as he begins his new job. In concerns, we continue to pray for Pat Stillwell, who heals from a broken wrist, and Gary Coleman, who is preparing to have surgery for colon cancer. We pray for everyone in education who's starting up a new school year, and especially we lift up our own Pennington Presbyterian Nursery School. And we pray this Labor Day weekend for those who are working, those who are looking for work, those who are trying to hire people for work, and for everyone to have safety and equity in the workplace. And Dennis and Carol Yurk ask for uh, their friend Jim, who's been in intensive care for a week, and for his wife, Pat. Are there other things you'd like to add to our prayers this morning? Okay. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for your saving love poured out in human history, the blessing of your word and spirit at creation, the deliverance of your people through the sea, the way your justice rolls down like water, the river of life that flows from your throne. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, how he poured out his life in love for the world through the baptism of his death and resurrection. How he feeds and fills us with his body and blood through the bread and cup we share in his name. God, we give you thanks for all the things that bring joy to our lives. For Hazel, Sophia, and for the gift of grace for all of us in baptism. We celebrate the joy along with Don and Ellen Wright as they have become great grandparents for the first time to Aria Wright Tin. Bless Aria and her parents, Vanessa and Matt. We thank you, O oh God, for the joy of music, and especially today for Don Dolan and his 22 years of sharing in music ministry with us. Bless Don as he begins his new position at Nassau this week. God, we lift up those who are in need of your care. We pray for our Pennington Presbyterian Nursery School as they begin a new year, for their children and families, for teachers and the board, and for Hope Anderson, our director. Bless each one, Lord, and may your love be experienced in this place each day. We pray for all students and teachers and professors and administrators who are going back to school we pray for an easing of anxieties, for a building of good friendships, and the development of deep thinking and creativity and wisdom and love. We pray for our church, for growth in faith and growth in faithfulness for each person, young and not so young, for guidance as we work together to discern your will for our ministries, and for energy and love for all that we do in your name. We pray for those who are in need of your healing touch, God, your comfort and your presence. We lift up Pat Stillwell and ask for healing for her broken wrist and Gary Coleman as he prepares for surgery for colon cancer. 
We pray for Jan Black, who is undergoing chemotherapy. We pray for those who are alone or lonely, for those who are overwhelmed with life, for those who have forgotten how much you love them. This Labor Day weekend, we pray for those with jobs, those looking for jobs, those needing to hire people, for safety and equity in the workplace for all. We pray for the world, O oh God, for those in danger because of poverty, tyranny, war, or climate change. Couple our acts of compassion with advocacy for change that will make a difference, not just for me or for us, but for those in greatest need. And God, we ask that you would hear us as we unite our voices in the prayer of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Postlude, you're invited to follow us over to Upper Titus Hall for a reception. We'll have some moments to speak and to laugh and to sing together and to give our thanks to Don as we finish up his ministry here. And now go forth with Christ surrounding you, and may the love of God, the blessing of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the fellowship of our Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.